Hi there, it's Jimmy with Fancy Schmancy Wino. That's Jimmy, not James. James is at home working on his latest hobby, extreme jigsaw puzzling. We're here today to drink wine. This week, rosé. Now before I get into rosé, I'll just tell you what it is, since you may or may not know, and there's a distinction that's important with this wine we're about to have. Rosés are typically um, uh, red wines that have not been fermented on the skins, but for a very brief time, sometimes like hours, not even a full day. Um, the length of time that it's on the skins is really what uh, dictates the color of the wine. Um, it can also be made the way this wine is made, which I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, I'll just get to it now. We're having a 2015 Dark Horse Rosé. Um, this wine is not 100% uh, red wine. It's 80% uh, red wine. Specifically, it is 40% Grenache, 20% Barbera, 20% um, Tempranillo, and 20% Pinot Gris. That's white wine. So, rosé wines can also be blended uh, with white wine, so it'll be a red and a white. Not as common and sometimes shunned, but I, for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Wine's wine, so we'll mix it together and it's still wine. Um, anyway, so there you go. This wine is from Dark Horse, which is uh, headquartered in Lodi, California. No, not Lodi. Modesto. Oops. Modesto, California. And the winemaker is Beth Liston, I want to say. Beth Liston. I don't know. I watched the video. If you go to their website, there has a video and you can actually meet Beth or watch Beth. Um, what can we tell you about this? Rosé wines, good summer wines, perfect summer wine really. Um, great on a summer evening, which is exactly why I'm having it in mid-October in my kitchen at 10.30 in the morning in the middle of a giant uh, storm that's currently brewing. I figure, why not? I've had my bowl of chocolate checks like every responsible adult. Let's drink wine. So let's drink wine. Let's try this sucker. Screw cap because they're just as good as corks. Maybe not as cool, but whatever. Uh, color. We're, well, all rosé wines kind of look pinkish to me. Um, various shades of pink, and just by their nature, I don't know that the color really means much to it. So, I'm gonna call that sort of a peachy pink. Peachy pink, dark horse. Seems kind of oxymoron there, but whatever. Let's give it a whiff. get the, there's berry, but it's light strawberry, really light, especially, you know, when the, uh, strawberries kind of have that little bit of an earthy smell to them, a little bit, not vegetable-y, but there, and some melon. And then like a really hint of uh, like cherry, but it's that like candy cherry. So like, I guess if you were to smell a cherry starburst or something like that, I would call that what I'm smelling. Whatever, let's taste it. That's nice. Very mouth-watering, though. <laughs> Lots of acid in it, which is nice. Kind of a light body wine. Could be lighter. Not that I'm saying I want it to be lighter, but I'm saying it could be lighter, but it's still pretty light. Taste-wise, um, I'd say a little bit of a little bit of tart cherry, a little bit. And then 
I don't know if it's just, I'm just being influenced by the peach color, but I'm going to say a little bit of peach or apricot, one of the two. Instead of having cereal, I should have had peaches and apricots, then I could tell you what, exactly which one it is. But some sort of stone fruit, probably not a avocado, but you get the drift. Yeah, that's nice. Kind of bummed it's 10.30 in the morning, because I'd like to drink more of this. I am going to say that this light-bodied, um, it's still dry, but I, I mean, it's, it's got some sweetness to it, so I would almost call it off-dry, but it's not that sweet. Um, cherry flavor. I like it. I'm going to call it a B. I'm gonna call it B plus actually. I really like this. I love the uh, mouth watering going on in there. That's delightful. Makes me want to just guzzle it. Is that allowed at this time in the morning? Who cares? Gonna do it anyway. Cheers. Anyway, we'll see you next week when we'll try some other wines. Couldn't tell you right now. Haven't talked to James about it. Um, hopefully, when you see his video, which follows this one, he'll mention what it is. My bad. Thanks. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fancy Schmancy Wino. I'm James, not Jimmy, but you already knew that. Uh, earlier in this video, he welcomed you and introduced you to uh, Dark Horse uh, wines and specifically the Dark Horse Rosé. Um, you know, we sat down a, a couple weeks ago and thought about the different wines we'd uh, taste going into the, the holidays and into winter and thought, you know, one last chance to throw in a summer wine and uh, and I'll admit to you, what jumped out to me is there's some great deals to be had as uh, some of the stores in your area and mine are trying to make space and uh, bring out all the red wines, all the custom wines and uh, specialties. And so it just kind of made sense to maybe introduce you to another wine that uh, I think you're going you're gonna to agree is a great wine at an absolute great price. Um, Dark Horse has put out a couple other great wines I've enjoyed, including the Merlot. So if you haven't tried that, give it a shot. Uh, rosé wines are, are, are uh, unique in the fact that uh, for many people it's kind of a, uh, something a little bit beyond the, the whites. Whites tend to be sweet or uh, very crisp and acidic and uh, rosés can run the gamut of sweet uh, almost dessert wines as, as far as I'm concerned all the way to some of the, uh, the richer full-bodied, um, I thinking some uh, of the, uh, there's a Cabernet uh, rosé I've had before and uh, Pinot Noir rosés, and they get a little bit bigger body. Uh, in this case, I'm sure Jimmy told you that uh, we've got some unique grapes in here that I've not had in other rosés, including Barbera, one of my favorite red grapes. And so um, I expect some neat things out of this wine, and I'd like to talk to you what, about what we might do with it food-wise, but uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, he probably also mentioned screw cap, uh, very popular in a lot of parts of the world. Not as widely uh, accepted here, uh, stodginess, tradition, whatever. Okay, um, right off the bat, you're going to see that nice uh, pink uh, color, uh, you know, rosé, uh, if you will. Um, some are lighter, I've seen a few that are even darker, but this is kind of typical of what I'd expect to see from rosé, what I'd, I'd want to see. Um, just a little bit of a, a fizz coming off there. You know, it may just be the bottle, it may just be a movement, not so much the wine itself. You know, when I look at this wine and uh, the description of it, looking at the front, um, looks like it is about 13% alcohol, so uh, right in that kind of average range for an American wine. Um, very light, uh, not viscous at all, so Let's go ahead and get in there and see what it smells like. You know, it's, it's very crisp. Um, I'm getting uh, hints of strawberry, but uh, what jumps out to me is a reminder of a, of a, a Pinot Grigio, really. Um, and 
I think Pinot represents about 20% of uh, this wine's makeup. Yeah, light strawberry, maybe a little bit of grass, uh, just... Um, just the lightest sweetness coming off there, and again, that, that would fit with strawberry. Um, it's a nice smelling. Again, a summertime wine, you expect it to be crisp and inviting, and uh, on a hot day, just something you want to drink. So let's, uh, let's taste it. Cheers. Um, yeah, it's uh, some of the flavors of uh, the, the strawberry that I said, um, I don't get the sweetness that I'm smelling off of it. A um, little floral, uh, uh, grassy, uh, you know, it's, it's a longer finish than some roses I've had, and that's where I'm kind of getting some of the, the grass uh, tones on the back side. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's easy drinking. I wouldn't call it sweet, so it's a, it's a dry rosé. Um, strawberry grass, uh, it get, really reminds me of a Pinot Grigio. And so um, when I think about these kind of wines, it, it can be refreshing to have it on a summer day, but also when you're having a mealtime. I know a lot of folks will m pair these up with salads, um, maybe a, you know even a fruit salad, something... Uh, light but i i wonder if there's not just enough acidity here to also pair it with some spicy foods uh, when you're, you're sweeter rosés I, I wouldn't go that direction but when it gets a little bit bigger body and um, i believe we were talking about uh, tempranillo uh, grenache is the, the main grape uh, barbera uh, pinot gris so we've got some some grapes in here that i think might be able to stand up some to some spicier foods and so maybe barbecue, although I'm, I'm not inclined to go that direction. Um, I was reading uh, up on some other rosés that they uh, thought might would pair, they, those experts out there in the, in the internet world, but maybe with some curries. Um, over the weekend, we decided to whip up uh, some seven layer dip. Um, nah, I don't think there's seven layers. Um, sour cream, cheese, guacamole, uh, Black bean salsa, so yeah, nowhere near seven layers, can't count. Um, but more of a spicy dip, and uh, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll bring it over to you guys and say, okay, how about dark horse rosé and a uh, one, two, three, four, or five layer dip, and let's see, uh, let's see how it does. Um, it is one of my favorite dips, so I'm probably gonna like it either way. Yeah, I love the dip, but this isn't a tasting for dip, so let's see how it goes with the rosé. Yeah, I can do it. Um, I think it's going to depend on how you feel about spicy food in general. Um, I think there's just enough acidity in here to, to get by. Uh, the finish on the wine is, is nice and long, and so for me... Uh, where sometimes like a red doesn't pair well with these and you almost need a white. I, I love uh, Blanc de Blanc and uh, some sparkling wines with chips and salsa. In my world, almost anything pairs with chips and salsa, but um, also uh, an, an oak Chardonnay. I didn't care for something on Blanc with, with chips and salsa, but um, maybe too much citrus. But I think I can get away with uh, putting these two together. Uh, one more try and then I'll be sure. You know, summertime food, love chips any time of year, but summertime in particular, sitting around the picnic, table full of chips and salsa, um, different whites are gonna be out there. Maybe throw out a, a bottle of Dark Horse Rosé. Um, I'd encourage you to think about throwing it on your shelf right now. This uh, 2015 seems to have gotten pretty good reviews across the board. Some great prices. I know here in the Midwest, we're getting it for six to $8 a bottle, which, you know, who doesn't want a good deal? So if you haven't tried it, 
and it hasn't gotten too cold where you are, grab yourself a bottle of Dark Horse Rosé. Um, next week, excited. Remember I said Barbera is one of my favorite grapes? We're going to bring it to you. We're going to try it. It's from um, Trader Joe's. I, I, we've all heard of Two Buck Chuck, right? Um, we're, we're, well, we might try those someday on camera. That's not where we're going. Uh, Trader Joe's, if you haven't been there, they've got several shelves of uh, medium to higher range wines that aren't sold elsewhere that are not in the $3 price range or the $2 price range, but rather in the $10, $15. And for a Barbera, uh, Barbera wines, typically what I've seen, 16 is a low end, um, 25, 30 is more normal and putting in that mid range price. So uh, for Trader Joe's have a $15 Barbera is a, is a good deal still, but what remains to be seen is how do we feel about it? How do we like it? And so I'll be excited to introduce that to you and uh, hopefully as excited when I'm done drinking it. But for now, I'm James with Fancy Schmancy Wino and cheers. That's a good deal.